Nice to see you, Excellency. You're welcome. I'm Jeremiah with the Ambo Chien, as the North Coast Commissioner from Embakasi East. Okay, welcome. Personally, I do believe that every saint had a past, mm. and uh, every sinner has a future. So where I come from, in Embakasi East, I think you've ever heard of Kayole, mm -hmm. heard of gangs known as Gaza, and they are dread, they are dreaded gangs, and they are initiated into gangs, and they are given names, names which describe their activities. Mm -hmm. And when I went through the scouting profile, I saw there is Catholic Scout Association, and their headquarters are in Rome. Mm -hmm. And where I checked, where I checked, I realized that. There's a lot which we have to do, which we have to do, especially from the Catholic side, from what they come through. And the question, the, the question which I want to ask is, how can the Catholic Scouts Association come in for positive change among peers? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, I myself have been a scout for long years, more than 20 years I was with the scouts. Um, in fact, up to a certain extent, I found my vocation to the priesthood within the scouts uh, through the religious experience, up to a certain extent, you might say, that, that, that I experienced in scouting group. And because we were not a specifically Catholic scouting group, scout group, but even though we were not officially Catholic, we came from a very Catholic background and all the members of the scouting group that, that I was in, they were all Catholic because, I mean, our diocese is 98% Catholic, so it's very hard to find somebody else who's not Catholic. Um, what I've learned with the scouts, generally speaking, is uh, the sense of working together as a group, the sense of respect for nature, uh, think also nowadays of the encyclic of the Holy Father, Laudato Si. The sense of being able to do a lot with little means. A sense also of the presence of God, which for me was very important. The presence of God in nature. Uh, finding God as a creator in the flora and fauna of creation and being able to adore him and recognize him in that. In fact, I could even add to that that my calling to the priesthood did not go through the church. My calling to the priesthood came through nature and through my experience with God as a creator in nature, which was very much uh, encouraged by my experience as being a scout. That's good. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at the calling of or how Jesus called the young people to be disciples, to be among the apostles, he realized that when he told them that I'll make you fishers of men, that's what he said. We realized that some fishes, because I come from a fishing community, mm -hmm. and there are some, the more you go deep down the sea, the more you realize that the fish become so terrible and they become so fierce. Yes. What is the role of the church to reaching out the youths who are so much deep into the sea, who are so much deep into dark life, to empower them and eventually become youths who can be self-reliant and even give the first fruits to God? Well, that's a big one. Uh, of course, uh, you know, speaking of which, Don Bosco was exactly the man who did that, who very much saw that there were these street boys that had no indication, that were growing up in crime, who were pickpockets and, and thieves, uh, and he gave them a structure, he gave them education, he gave them a school, and with that gave them the tools to a better future, a more structured organized future for themselves. I think it is the calling of the church, it has always been and it will always be, uh, even though it not always been responded to in the same way, is to be with 
those, as our Holy Father Pope Francis would say, to be with those who live at the periphery, with those who have been rejected by society, by those who have been expelled, and the youth who live in gangs, they roll into that, they, 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 they slip into that because of very different reasons. Um, Many times I do even think they are not completely aware of what is happening. It is, it is a process which goes step by step and they find themselves in that kind of situation. I think it is, it is a vocation of the church to, yeah, to get closer to them, even though that is difficult, by the way. We had a few days, two weeks ago, we had the gospel in the church, a gospel on Sunday on Zacchaeus, the man well, the, the chief tax collector, they say. Now, chief tax collector, he was a crook by excellence, right? And he had been uh, rejected and expelled by the community, was not part of it, because, frankly speaking, he was a thief. And, uh, and he was a traitor above, above that. Uh, I remember when I, was held, when I was having my sermon here, I told the people, you know, like in my own country after the Second World War, there were traitors who had worked with the Germans. He, Zacchaeus, was working with the Romans. What did they do after the Second World War with traitors? They shaved them and burned them alive. That is what happened. Now, this is the kind of man to which Jesus says, I want to be with you tonight. I want to have dinner with you tonight. I want to eat with you tonight. So, and that is something that is a vocation, an example for the church, to try to be close to these people, even though, you know, I mean, that is very clear. This is very difficult. And even from the side of these gangs, they will have their own suspicion. As soon as they feel there's somebody coming in who has this, this, this label of church, they will say already, keep out. So I do think it is very much a, a question of getting closer to these people, trying to win their trust. And then first of all, as Jesus did, Jesus didn't say when Zacchaeus was saying that, uh, sitting in the tree, hey, what did I hear? You're a chief tax collector. Give that money back. No, no, that's not what he said. He said, I want to eat with you tonight. And then in that encounter with Jesus, it was Zacchaeus himself who came to the conclusion that he had to reform his way of life. So I do think that as a church we have that same calling. Is that easy? No, it's not easy. Does it take a lot of time? Yes, it will take a lot of time. Uh, do you need a lot of courage? Yes, you need enormous amount of courage. But I do think we need to be like Christ himself. And this is the only way to do it. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Next time we'll come and give you a scarf. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.